Hi guys, welcome to Bootstrap for tutorial. I am Michal, co-founder of mdbootstrap.com. In this series you will learn two exciting technologies, the newest Bootstrap 4, world's most popular framework for building responsive mobile first sites, and material design for Bootstrap, a powerful and free library which extends Bootstrap functionalities and provides tuning design for your project. We'll create two projects. At the beginning, simple, so call it corporate website to grasp a basic concept of Bootstrap 4. And later, the beautiful landing page. Alright, enough talking, let's start coding. This is first website we'll create. Simple, but responsive. Looks good both on desktop and mobile. And our next project, a landing page. Of course, responsive as well. All right, let's start coding. Go to mdbootstrap.com. Click on getting started. Scroll down the page and click on direct download. Then unzip the package. Open it in your favorite code editor. Open index.html file. And then open index.html file in your browser. Come back to your editor and remove the intro. Save the file, refresh the browser. Now let's create a basic structure of our project. We'll divide the page into the three sections. Header for main navigation. Main for the website content and footer for additional information and links. These elements don't have any special properties, but they keep our project structure and clear. Go to mdbootstrap.com Click on Components Navbar And copy the code of basic example Then paste it into our header section Save the file and refresh your browser. And here is the navbar. That was easy, wasn't it? Of course our navigation requires a few modification, but we'll take care of it later. Navbars come with built-in support for a handful of subcomponents. Let me tell you about supported content. Navbar brand is an element dedicated for your company product or project name. Navbar Toggler is a button which activates hidden content on mobile devices. Collapsible content is a wrapper for hiding your content you want to hide on mobile devices. Links are of course the links. You can rename it as you wish and redirect to internal or external websites. Dropdown is a useful element when you need more advanced link structure. Search form is that nice search box in the right corner of our navbar. Alright, that's it about the navbar. Now let's take care of main section.
we're gonna use a famous bootstrap grid system. We will play a little with the grid to explain you how exactly does it works in Bootstrap 4. If you don't know yet, Bootstrap Grid is a powerful tool which let us create a responsive website adjusted to mobile tablets and desktop screens. The first element we're gonna talk about is a container. Bootstrap requires a containing element to wrap site contents and house our grid system. When using grid, you always need to start with the container. I'm going to present you how the container works, and for testing purpose, I will add a few B errors. We will remove them later. We will also make our container red to make it visible in our browser. Alright, here is our container. You can use a basic container with right and left margins or container fluid which takes a full available space. Alright, let's remove unnecessary code and go further to the next bootstrap grid elements, rows. Rows create a horizontal group of columns, therefore if you want to split your layout horizontally, use div class row. Let's create our first row. Similarly to the case with the container, we'll add a few BR to make it visible. Later we'll remove them. Now duplicate the first row and create the second one. We will set the colors to our rows, blue and green. Save the file, open your browser and refresh it. And here they are blue and green rows. Now it's time for last and most significant elements. Columns. Remove unnecessary code from our rows. Now we can create our first column. Duplicate it and create the second one. Make the first one red and the second blue. Save the file and refresh your browser. And we forgot to add a BRs to our columns to make it visible. Let's fix it. Here they are, two columns. Can you see that number? It means we set a 6 units to our column. Bootstrap Grid allows us to divide a single row into 12 columns. In our row we have two columns, each 6 units wide, which gives us exactly 12. If we change it to 12, you will see that our first column took the entire available space and the second column was push out to the second row. If we want to have a three columns within our row, we need to create a three columns, each one four units wide. And if you want to have four columns, we need to create a four columns, each one three units wide. I think you get the point. You can play with the columns until you reach the number 12. Then you need a second row. What's important, our columns are already responsive, which means on the large screens they are displayed horizontally, but on the smaller screens they jump one under another. All right. We'll remove that draft and then we'll create the grid we'll need in that project. So of course we start with the container, then we'll need two rows.
in the first row we need two columns first column seven units wide let's duplicate it and change the number to five in the second row we need three equal columns each four units wide Now a small explanation that MD part means medium and it tells our browser display the columns on medium and larger screens horizontally but on smaller screens vertically. To make it even more responsive we'll add a small modification. We want that browser on large screens displays our first column in 4 units horizontally and on medium and smaller screens on 12 units. And the next two columns display on large screens also in 4 units and on medium and smaller screens with 6 units. If something isn't clear right now, don't worry, we'll explain the advanced grid behavior in the next lessons. That's it for that lesson. Thank you for watching and see you in the next tutorial.